You're welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. It's your boy Bugs. Finally got my guy Armani. Long Armani related. Lee in this bitch. <laughs> How are you, brother? Um, cheers. I feel like we've been trying to do this for like a couple months now. A long time. Yeah. Months? Years? Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely years, but like actively trying to get together. You know, um, I'm doing great. Wonderful. Like Bugs said, Armani Lee here. Mm-hmm. Happy to be here. Full Circle Podcast. My guy. You know? Tis a full circle moment with, uh, in which the day that it is, it was it just happened. I love that it happened randomly too. That it was because of a, uh, Carney said at fucking beer fest. And he's just like, yeah, you want to come do a podcast for sure. It's like that's that's so awesome. Yeah, it's full circle met through Carney. So yeah, that is that is interesting. So um, so who are you, man? What like what what would you describe your uh, your being or my being. What you do as a musician or an artist or creator. Hmm. I would say, well, I'm definitely an artist, instrumentalist, producer, engineer, 76ers basketball fan. Yeah, that shirt is so- <laughs> yeah. I was like, every now and then, I'm like, yeah. wait, it says Phil in there. Yeah. That's fucking epic. Um, yeah, but other than that, man, I'm an explorer. I'm just here to discover, explore, and actualize. That's <laughs> I my, see that. That's my credo, you know, just trying to out here. Um, understand myself on a deep level, understand the people around me, the world I live in, uh, through art and expression. So I definitely see that. The way that um the way that you interact, you're not um like brash or like on on anything. You're more of just more of a malleable and you do interpret things and relay depending on what that is. It's like I, that's definitely something I've noticed and it Shows and how we jam. Like, yeah, definitely. I definitely picked that up in our improv jams. With that's why I love that because you learn way more about a person. Hundred like, percent. Sometimes people can't say what they actually are thinking. Mm-hmm. They're like saying words, but they're not getting to the core. But when you're a musician and you can just let that energy out, depending on the vibe that you do, you can really pick up on how a person interacts with. The world around them 100 percent. so when you jam with a person who decides to per se be a pocket drummer versus a drummer who just goes the fuck off yep versus a person who counter melodies and adds all these motifs that people don't even think are bringing the whole thing to the next thing that's you know those are very different kinds of musicians and you're one of those people that glues things together and I see that in in your personality with how you just described what you do with that's that's actually like so beautiful because yeah, that's exactly that. what I see when we play together. Thank, thanks thanks man. Fucking, that's awesome dude. Yeah, I mean it's intentional. You uh-huh. know, I really try to be intentional in everything Fully I do. Fully intentional. You know, yes. with the clothes mm-hmm. that I wear, how I communicate with people, how yeah. I um, present myself on stage or on mm-hmm. the internet or by not presenting myself on the internet, you know, all of those things are very calculated and yeah. directly aligned mm-hmm. with how I see the world and what mm-hmm. I want from life, you know? Mm-hmm. That's so. fucking beautiful, man. Yeah. And I can, I can, that's what I mean. I can definitely attest to with what I've interpreted from you with our interactions as friends into um, jamming. And that's what I like. I think the jamming is just the most pure version of it because there's no words and it's vibrations and it's how we're and our smiles and our like gritty faces and the things that we do while we're doing it it's just very interesting who uh because it's as a drummer you guys often say that you guys are following what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and i'm like no i'm doing exactly what you guys are yeah like that's why it works you mm -hmm. know because it's active listening yep you know Mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention to what we're doing then it's mm-hmm. just gonna all fall apart, and that carries into us as people, though. If you're exactly, not listening yeah. to how the person feels and what they say, you're just waiting to respond, mm-hmm. or you just want to say, "This is my art. Look at it. This is who I yeah. am. Appreciate me." Like that's important, 100%. and that's why, like, I really appreciate you. It's more like, uh, whenever it's there, it's something to like cherish the moment because you know it's going to be something genuine. Yeah. That's why I love when we all link because it's always something that's like. This is where it is. This is yeah. what it is. There's no other alter motive than being us and this right now. In this moment. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like a lot of other things we do in life are we got to pay a bill. We're, we're here because we got to do this to do that. Yeah. And whereas when we link, it's that's the point. I don't know what the point is, but I know that that's definitely one of them. Yeah. I Whatever think, that feeling is. Yeah. I think the point, the point is just to be open. Yeah. And, um, 
mm-hmm. to allow to surrender, you know, mm-hmm. to just be present. I At agree. least that for me, you know, like when I show up to those kind of peaks and valleys, for example, you mm-hmm. know, like when we do that, um, it's just to just be as open as possible and to be what you were saying, the glue, you know, yeah. to, to be listening and to figure out where are we now? Where can we go from here? Yeah. How do we extend this? How do we stay put when it feels just right? You know, like all mm-hmm. those things. Um, it feels super so important to me as an, as a musician. <clears throat> Improvisation is the highest form of uh, musical language to me. You know, to be mm-hmm. completely present Agreed. in the moment and to express. You know, not like I've rehearsed mm-hmm. this a bunch of times, but I heard you play something and I want to yeah. expand upon that mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. You know, not like next like week. Like with what feels right. Yeah. You know, to like sometimes we'll get into this iffy areas, but like it's very weird too. That's the thing about improv. Like the fuck ups wind up being the spot. Yeah. Like when 100%. you fuck up sometimes it turns into like a new riff yeah. or a tempo and then you lean into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see it as like a, um, as I was saying before, like discovering, exploring, actualizing. Like we're exploring a new terrain. You know, we have a machete and we're chopping down this new terrain to find that yeah. new pasture, that mm-hmm. beautiful waterfall, that, mm-hmm. what is the melody that like people grab onto. That's you know? exactly how I describe it. It's like uh, we're, we're just, there's, there's always those middle spots in the jam yeah. where like you can tell that like, a, an outside listener would be like, "What's happening right now?" Mm-hmm. Not that anything's off key or yeah, anything's. But it out feels of, like we're going you, somewhere. You, you yeah. can like, "What's happening?" And like, that's that's the spot where like, just give it, give it twenty more seconds. Yeah. Something's gonna come out of. You're gonna open those fucking weeds and see a fucking beautiful lush El Dorado. Right. And like, we get there. However, we get there. Mm-hmm. And once you're there, it's dude. It's so hard. It's euphoric. It's like it's so. Before her course, yeah, it's it's so fucking. I can't. Ex- I don't, I I wish everybody could feel this. Like, 100%. I'm sure you feel it. Like, I'm certain people who who cook, they feel it when they like cook like the right meal and yep. they watch people's reactions. It's the same feeling, I'm sure, in different dynamics. But like sports or like when like something like that happens. But dude, music is the universal language across. Like, you don't need words. Mm-hmm. That's why I love the improv jamming. Like, I'm a rapper. I'm a yeah. poet. I'm a writer. Like, that's what I care about. I do podcasts. I talk. Yeah. But Meaning drumming, through words, yeah. Drumming and just by physically, like, beating something up. Yeah. Which is a paradox in my brain. But I'm making love to it at the same time because I'm speaking through per- percussive sonics. Yeah. It's, it's It doesn't make sense. But it, it does. But it's <laughs> it that's does. why I love it. It's you know. none of it makes sense. What I'm I'm hitting shit, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm hitting metal and plastic and skin skins and and it's it it really blows my mind. Like when you really break it down, what the fuck I'm doing on, right. on a drum kit, and to pair that with piano, which I I look at as percussion, not in the yeah. James Brown term where everything's percussion, but like piano is percussion because you're hitting it mm-hmm. into strings and shit. And I've been I've I've wait I've been waiting so long to play with like people like you guys who just actually envision it like that. Yeah. Where it is its own conversation. It is its own day, season, moment, and time. It's not this song that you wrote three years ago mm-hmm. that does not have a different interpolation, whether it's punk or a different version. No, like this is how we are right now. This is who we are right now. Yeah. Wherever this goes is that, and there's no expectation. That's why I love Peaks and Valleys, because it's a um, side project. Yeah. That's just the excuse and the name for it. It's a fucking band, and it's epic. Yeah, but at sure. the end of the day, the reason it's a side project is because we have a lot of our own shit. That's the yeah. main point. But we just, there's no pressure there, bro. There's no pressure, like, probably that we put on our own yeah, shit. Exactly. I, I put I, pressure on my own shit. Yeah, that's what makes Peaks and Valleys great, is yeah. there is no real pressure and then Mm -hmm. the fact that we all actively are doing very different things as solo Mm -hmm. um you know musicians and producers engineers uh and i love very different lenses if you guys don't know this is this is the motherfucker who's when you hear like the mpc samples and shit like all the sounds the gnarly anything that meshes that shit together is is this motherfucker so i want to ask you um what's up First of all, obviously, what was your first instrument type thing? Mm -hmm. And then can you bounce that into what got you into all the other things musically that you expanded into? Yeah, for sure. With the MPC, or did it start with more of those hip-hop stuff? 
style, like, you know? No, definitely not. So, to go way back, 2001, I got my first guitar. I was, well, I guess, eight years old or whatever mm -hmm. for Christmas. So, started with guitar. Yeah, started with guitar. Got that instrument, and um, I took probably a week's worth of lessons, and they tried to do the sheet music thing. Mm -hmm. Hated it. Didn't connect with it at all. Hung the thing up. Put it in a case. Yeah, and, once it gets there, it's... Yeah, yeah and know, I agree. Just yeah. didn't connect with it, and I wasn't ready for it as a child or whatever, but um, mm -hmm. music was always just, like, in the house, a part of my life. Um, if you had, like, a Guitar Hero style, but with the real instrument at that time, mm -hmm. that would have been, like, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, You know, I did connect with Guitar Hero when it eventually yeah. came out, and mm -hmm. that motion and those actions. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't really until, I guess, my senior year or my freshman year of college is when uh, I started to dabble in instruments again. Um, I had a college roommate. Shout out to Steve, Stevie Slacks. Mm -hmm. He has a, uh acoustic guitar that he let me borrow. And I would just strum it from time to time, and the more I played it, the more I connected with it. So then I ended up getting an acoustic guitar mm -hmm. uh, that Christmas, and that's what really um, changed everything in my life. Honestly, I, um, yeah. without getting into the weeds of it, changed my major, uh, started to study because of the guitar, indirectly or directly, you know, like so. Just in a quick nutshell, like mm -hmm. went to Temple University. I was studying biology. I wanted to go to med school. Um, I switched my major to computer science after that. Mm -hmm. Then I was a math major. I was a math tutor for a while. Oh, shit. And then it ended up... Um, I love math. Dude. Yeah, me too. That's my shit. Ended up uh, media production. So I studied audio and video production, yeah. recording, engineering, all that stuff. That's what I ended up with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, indirectly, the guitar changed my life. Just solely because of the connection that I found with it, you know? Yeah. I stopped going out to parties. Um, on the weekends, it was just about Later me. Later on in life? That's interesting, too. Yeah. Later, Later on in life, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it... it we talked a little bit about it off camera before, but um, it became that outlet that I needed to mm -hmm. to get through college, yeah. you know, like to channel and to process the things that I was learning. Yeah, both. It wasn't cocaine. It was a guitar. No, it was a guitar and, and hella bud. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate yeah. conversation, you know, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, just I discovered this outlet, this thing that I could process my life through, you know, yeah. the struggles of learning to be a young man, you know, the struggles mm -hmm. of trying to get this degree and figure yeah. out who you are. And all. Mm -hmm. I was able to get that through the guitar. So, mm -hmm. yeah, long story short, freshman year, I started to play, changed everything. I started traveling all over the place, going to every open mic I freshman could. Freshman year of college, yeah. Freshman year of college, yep. Mm. And, uh, yeah, played every open mic in mm. fucking tri-state area, mm. just trying to play in front of people because it felt intoxicating. Yeah. I had this... Uh, it's a different dude, I'm telling you. Like, that's what I'm saying. That adrenaline, it's... It's not the same. Mm -hmm. It's not like I mean I've I've played sports. I've hit a game winning shot. Yep. I've hit the half court shot. It's like different. I've, I've felt that. It's not the same when you express art or you mm -hmm. perform art and it's not about being the center of attention, bro. No. It's weird. It's it's like hitting the game shot is the center of attention. Yeah. That's ex exactly what I'm saying actually. In music when when you perform it and people feel it, it's a connection. Yeah. It's not like Oh, he won the game. It's like, oh, we it's we won. Yeah, you know. I, no, I know what you're saying. I don't know how else to describe it. For me, yeah. the way I describe it is um, surrender. You know, mm -hmm. like you're just surrendering to the moment. Like when I perform, I'm just gone. I'm not mm -hmm. even really there. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm so in it I that it someone out. could yeah. just take me out clean, and I wouldn't even know it. Yep. You know, that's mm -hmm. just how that's how I gauge how well a performance went. How how in did I get? Yeah. Did I stop myself? Were or, you so aware of everything? You else? know, yeah. Of am I getting in my head where I can't get into that space mm -hmm. where I need to be? Yeah. To connect with. Yep. Everything that is, you know. Sometimes that happens just because of like. The sound. Yeah, sounds right? not if right. You, if your sound, yeah. if your sound can't get right, that'll happen. 100%. But like, even through that, bro, you can. You can still, get there. When people are like, like when when you not even people saying compliments, whatever, because that can be subjective between how fucked up a person is at that moment. Facts, yeah. But like when you rip it in a situation where the sound isn't good, and mm -hmm. you like then. That's that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's you overcome. What I mean. You tapped in it. Exactly. You tapped into that spot that yeah. you're talking about. I think that's, that's the point for me. That's it right there, you mm -hmm. know? And that's where we're trying to get to. And I think that um, even people who don't play instruments or uh, live an art artist they life, understand they understand it on a yeah. deeper level, you know? That's why they watch it. That's why they watch it, exactly. So yeah. They're waiting for that. They're yeah. waiting for those chills. Yeah, so that was my uh, 
Do you ever give yourself chills when you perform by yourself sometimes when you rehearse? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Actually, Some, yeah, it happens a lot with me too. Yeah, sometimes I um I just get walled up with emotion, mm-hmm. you know, just the joy of living and feeling mm-hmm. like so connected to something, yep. you know? Yep. And also just proud of myself for dedicating my life um, for 10 years to have this connection, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's not something that just happens. Maybe for some people, prodigies or whatever, but like you said, yeah. I started this shit later in life. So like same, I had to work yeah. for that connection mm-hmm. and it's so um, important to me. So mm-hmm. sometimes I just get flush with emotion. Like when I finish a mix it's beautiful. or I'm, uh, you know, rehearsing or whatever, like if I'm at that point where I feel emotional, that's when I know it's good, Yeah. you know? That's beautiful, man. Cause uh, I'll, I I make a lot, and I like how I was telling you earlier mm-hmm. with the way that I write. It's what I'm thinking and how I feel in the moment. It's not like I'm gonna make this kind of project this day and paint this color. No, like whatever I'm doing, and it's like I th- like right after this is over, mm-hmm. I'm I'm def- I'm inspired. I'm definitely making music after this. Mm-hmm. Like when I have like a 20 minute pocket by myself, I'm gonna make something. Yeah, I make music quick. That's not the point. I I just do what I do, you know what I mean? Yep. And that's like that's that's like what's intriguing about it to me. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's just a taking in that moment. I did definitely had a point, but I'm a little stoned right now. So I'm... Your question was about how did I get to the MPC though and that production oh, yes, stuff. Yes, yes. So so you started with the guitar mm-hmm. and then you went to um you realized that it was more about just the expression in itself. So how, what what age are we talking when you expanded from the guitar to another instrument now? Uh, like late after college? Because you, freshman year? Deeper into college. I would say junior, senior year is when I started to study like video editing and audio production. Mm-hmm. And I did that with the intention of supporting this okay, so that's burgeoning the thing. So like music without career. like, um, shout out Coco Evolve. That's like, I always was aware that I wanted, not wanted, kind of had to do other things because there's so much that I did yep. as a creator and I knew it needed to be documented whether it was recording anything else exactly. so and even in myself like being a rapper or something it's expensive to go to the studio yep. so I had to learn how to record myself and all that stuff and That's I already right. had video editing knowledge from like high school I did like TV tech type oh, shit that's so like I Shout really out to your high school for teaching yeah, that that's shit. awesome yeah. um but yeah, that was all a part of my motivation when I switched my major from my final switch was from math to. So at the end, it switched to like the production side. Yeah, that's when so I you started could to understand get understand how to record. How to record because okay, I understood okay, okay. a all of those things you Crucial. said about it being expensive, but also Crucial. b um, to provide value. So that I knew I didn't want my art to be compromised. I knew from a, as soon as I was yeah, getting into it, you want to be as it, original as possible. Yeah, have your sound. And I knew I wanted to have. Uh, Even though it's a digital age, yeah. you still need to mix it and have your. Mm-hmm. This is what my this is what I like for and sure. Whether you have another producer down the line that remakes it grander with effects, what or plugins, whatever. But to have your sound and what you want, yeah. dude, it's crucial, man. But to have uh, as a creator, also just skills to monetize, you know. Because yeah. I knew after the after it's college, when the bubble bursts, you know, you have to have things to um, mm-hmm. to supplement your lifestyle that. For me, it was always aligned to like my north star. So like a day spending uh, editing videos or a day, um, you know, doing a live sound event for me was always directly aligned with where I saw myself going. It wasn't a day uh, lost. Yeah, know? same. So mm-hmm. with those, with those. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got into the production. There's something shit. about like with the work ethic, with other things, I don't have that work ethic. Mm. You know what I mean? With other situations, but when it comes to this, but that's what's really trippy too is. Um, even when you're doing what you really want to do, it still works. Oh yeah, bro. Trust me. There's. It's still. It's oh, Monday, yeah. and I don't want to go to school today. Yeah. It's still the same, even when you're doing what you want. That's what was really hard for me to realize. Like when I when I have, and had and have success with it, like because it's all fluctuating with freelance workers, it goes up and down. You know. You have a lot of sessions this month, and then the next month you don't. Exactly. Because you're dealing with musicians, and they have jobs, and mm. they're, you know, it's all very different. It's not like you, everyone has record deals and shit like that. Mm. So, like, to really understand that, that's a that's a whole different perspective of, like, what, you know, what you do it for. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you do it to create. Yeah. So you needed this knowledge anyway, bro. Yeah, no, you I needed, needed it. You yeah, needed to be able to record it for yourself. Sure. So, okay, so so around then it went to that. So um, started producing, mm-hmm. started to record my own stuff, um, started to learn about 
different dolls. Logic, I did Logic for ten years, mm-hmm. learning how to. Yeah, I'm a Logic guy. Yeah, I recently switched to Ableton. That I'm been, trying. I want to make that transition. It's honestly been incredible, bro. I mean, Is I it, love Logic. How would you compare it? Compare it. Uh, how would you compare Logic to Ableton from the transition? Uh, that's a great question. So, um, shout out Cal Black. He put me on to Ableton and like what it can do for a lot in a live setting. Yeah, because that was something. Which is what we do, dude. Yeah, like, I, we need that. I was struggling for a while to get figure out what my live thing was going to look like. I did live looping for a while. I did singer songwriter solo acoustic. I did yeah. band stuff. Just trying to figure out what that was going to look like for me because I knew <laughs> I had a lot of interest as a producer, engineer, multi instrumentalist, yeah. singer, songwriter, yeah. all those things. Mm-hmm. Trying to figure out all that stuff and um ableton so far has given me the best um user interface to make all those things happen where i can kind of dj a little bit i can add effects it's just so weird how the layouts intimidate you yeah well i mean the uh you know the arrangement view is like logic a typical doll but the session view Mm -hmm. which is like typically used for uh Mm -hmm. the live setting it's really powerful in a sense of like what you can do to remix songs and in real time and add uh, a new life to things, bring things out, take things away, add effects, um, those kind of things, which to me is really intriguing and um, mm-hmm. has been incredible. But as as far as like producing and stuff, I feel like it's a little bit more intuitive and it's a little bit more straightforward of like, here's my ideas, how can I expand upon them? I felt like when I was in Logic, I was getting stuck in a lot of 8 and 16 bar loops. Like, cool, mm-hmm. I have this idea, this sounds cool, I like it. But how do I get out of this? It gets sectioned really quick. It gets stuck there. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm just like, and now this idea is dead because I've beat it to death Mm -hmm. listening to it on a loop over and over again. So are is it because the tracks constantly record? Is that why? Uh, Is that one of the reasons you think? I don't know. For some reason, I think because of the grid-based system, Mm -hmm. it's really easy to create variations. So I have this A section here. I have a B section over here. I can do different things over here without affecting this. I mean, you can do that there, but like the way that it's set up, it's really intuitive, and as far as automation, everything snaps really well. Um, that's incur- that's you know, it's just like it's it's very uh, quantized. Quantiz- what's the word? Quantiz- quantization, <laughs> yeah. So they got quantization dialed in, but they also have the groove pool, so where you can add swing to things. You can do audio to MIDI. There's hmm. some. I kind of sound like an Ableton rapper, or whatever. Right now, I've got to blur it on, but no, we're clipping all this <laughs> yeah. and we're getting sponsored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should, yo, hook me up. Shout bro. out, to Ableton. shout out, Logic. But <laughs> yeah, shout out to just technology in general. Good but um, bro. yeah, it's been truly amazing the past eight months. It, it's honestly um, revolutionized my workflow. Mm. In, and you're within the last two months, you're talking. Uh, so I bought Ableton probably, I guess almost a year ago now. Oh. And in that time, I feel more productive. I feel like I'm Is getting, it a one-time payment? Uh, yes, it's a one-time payment, but when they up, update things, you have to pay again, which is kind of whack because, like, Logic, 200 and you're good. So it's just random updates? So, like, every time they do, like, a, they just came out with the Ableton 12. So from go from 11 to 12, you got to pay the upgrade fee. The whole... Oh, just... But a, it's just, like... A, it's not like you have like to twenty bucks. Like mine was like two hundred. But I also have every this, year. No, no, no. It's like when they do like a major update, like every couple years. Every couple of years, and they add like new plugins or new effects and all that Damn. kind of stuff. Yeah. See, that's that's some shit, man. I mean, Logic, I think is like a little weird, like that too. I'm like, I don't even. Nah, Logic is good, bro. They have two hundred one time, this is forever, and you right? just get free updates, which is lit. That's how it should be for people trying to make stuff, but. Yeah. I do understand the uh you know development making new yeah. innovations and in technology like you know those people got to get paid so I mean if it's every couple if it's we're not if we're not if we're not talking about iPhone updates yeah, like yeah, every no, fucking no, no. month and a half to yeah, like, every couple years you know then you're good yeah then we're good with that I'll work with that but mm-hmm. um, all right so so that's that's really interesting so um so I obviously understand the transition of going to all these things and being able to record yourself to be able to pull off what you wanted to create. But, um, what made you specifically, this is a, like a rapper asking mm-hmm. one, the MPC, the MPC. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That's a great question. I mean, the MPC in general, if, if you enjoy hip hop music, like I do, it's an yeah. iconic machine. 
Um, but this is like, a, which one specifically do you have? Because it's clearly like. So I have the NPC. Yeah, fuck. NPC Live too. Damn, I wish we had it set up right now. Yeah, I have we it. in the We should actually do it. Yeah, I have it in the whip. We will. We'll do. We'll do a little segment. There you go. Instead of my commercial, we'll do Before it. Before you leave. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Instead of a commercial, we'll do. I'll make a All little right, quick that, beat or whatever we have to do. End it with it. Yeah. We'll, um. But to answer your question, why did I want the NPC? Um. I just wanted to be a part of the lineage of incredible producers you know like to tap into the history oh, that's awesome you know as well as um yep. it's aligned with how i like to engage with music i have a, a great fascination with rec- similar sampling to you sampling archiving yeah. mm-hmm. um i like to create art from life right mm-hmm. so it allows me the opportunity to take something from my phone from my computer from my camera Put it into Anything. the machine, and now I'm making music from something that is completely unique to my experience. Well, you kind of answered a question I'm going to ask you. What's that? What is your vision or view on um, does art depict life or does life depict art? I don't know. That's a great question, man. I think they they just go hand in hand. You know, it depends on how you want to go about it. You know, for from, me, from me, I think I feel like you said um, life is art. That's why you paint. Yeah, I mean. It can be if you if you see it that way. You know, there's beauty in everything. If, yeah. You know, like I remember um, having a conversation with a friend one time about like why do I record mm-hmm. um, on my phone? Like just recording. Oh, just random shit. Just random shit on my yeah, phone. You know. I do the same. Yeah. And for me, I, the way I described to him to him was even the silence on that recording. It's a mo- yeah. You know, it still yeah captures a space or a moment in time, right? Mm-hmm. So if you bake that. Over the top of your sound, or constantly, I'm constantly doing. You know, that. so it's like now your audience is subconsciously somewhere. Mm. It, it doesn't have to be explicit. Like I'm in a coffee shop or I'm by the beach, yeah. But they're in some place they're in some time. Yeah, they're there. You know, mm. so it's a it's a piece of my experience that yeah. you can't get not, on. Display. It's not some VHS static. No, no, no. It's, it's the sound. It's the sound yeah. of my grandmom's mm. living room. Yeah, just the air in there. You know, or the yeah. air of me in my car and I'm upset and I'm just sitting there. Mm-hmm. Just in my car in silence, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and I'll title it. Yeah. I'm pissed as fuck, mm-hmm. and I can just tap into that whenever I want. It's just silence. And you have it, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Energy, energy, huge. You know, so the NPC allows oh, me to awesome. to create from those moments. Mm-hmm. You know, very easily. I could just throw that shit on a pad. I could pitch it up. Mm-hmm. I can rearrange it, chop it, turn it into a fucking key or some shit. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and now I'm making something. That you can't get on Splice, you can't download on the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. that's huge. It has me smiling so hard, dude. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, awesome. we talked a little bit about palettes or sound design or like things that make you you. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's hyper important to me. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So when we collaborate, you know, like yeah, I know, I know, we haven't done it yet for yeah, real. but just in general, just like yeah. peaks and valleys or whatever. Oh like, well, yeah, yeah, these but, are the things but, that we're bringing to the table. Yeah, you know. Uh-huh. As artists, and it's very unique, and it's why you 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 hear it, and I and I've noticed like obviously Carney and Cal, like obviously like nothing has to be said about that, but I notice when like when I'm looking at the videos and I listen back and I'm, like I'm like when I'm reacting and I'm going like woo like as a drummer I'm mm-hmm. like that's you mm-hmm. I'm reacting to what you're doing because it's the little things for me in yeah. life yeah. in general it's the little imitations that people do for each other um the whether they say i love you and they don't even know they are yeah or if like they don't know how bad you want to drink but they got a margarita ready Mm -hmm. like there's different levels to what people do and you don't know when you need it sometimes and when we play, I find you being that person i try to be not you you bring what i don't know that i need and it's just then it's just right there, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. It's like deja vu. It's like a pure feeling of like not being scared that I know that um this is it. Exactly. It's like pure, dude. It's, it's like it's pure. It's just pure. Yep. And like that, uh, that's what you just described with everything with those small little spaces in between. And wanting to capture those moments, and it it shows in the moments that you choose to express exactly with the words that you choose, and how you don't post on social media, and how you do certain things. You know what I mean? So like that shit matters. Like I post every week. Mm -hmm. I post a live performance 
or a podcast clip or something every single week. I've been doing it for three years. Power to you, bro. This, this is the first three weeks in my life, mm-hmm. the past three years, that I didn't post anything for three weeks. Oh, okay. I posted, like, a, come to the show today and that, but this is the first time. So, artistically, I already know that people who do follow me are like, where the fuck is Bugs? Yep. Like, what's happening? You set up that expectation, yeah. yeah. Because now I have that. Mm. So, like, but at the same time, I'm aware that I have my project in my mind and I'm ready to, I'm ready to drop now. I'm like, I'm not, I'm now not journaling mm-hmm. with live performances like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I'm now in an intentional place. Whereas, like, it's not like they weren't intentional. Because, like I said, even though if the song was four or five years old. Yeah. The time that I decided to do the live performance was intentional, 100%. and relative to my life and my 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 being. Yeah. But now, I'm very more selective, like with what you're saying, and that's very something I um admire deeply, dude. And it obviously shows in how we communicate and when we jam with instruments when we don't speak. It's like, dude, that like <laughs> that was our. So we jammed one time, second time was our full psychedelic jam, mm-hmm. and then that was the third time we played together. Yeah. Before a chorus. And that's just And remember how I was like Carney in the beginning, I love that we kept that cuz Carney's like um you play something Armani. Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Well, you I I forget, what did you I don't know what you did were you just changing your settings? Probably you just, some type of cloud, you know, some type of like ambient watch. So he goes, "Dude, dude, do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. Like, I remember, like, I haven't, I don't think I've talked to you about this. I don't think I've talked to any, like, I have friends, but when I'm pressing record on the one camera right there, and mm-hmm. I'm walking, when I hear do, 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 and you guys start going, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna play on the drums with this? True. I'm like, I can't just go, do, do, do. like, I, like, I, I, I'm like in my brain kind of bugging out because, like, what I don't I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I have no idea what to do with that. Yeah. It's such a gnarly bass line. It's very different. And I get to the drums and, like, right when I hear, like, <laughs> like you guys are doing those things. And I was just like, let me just do hip hop. Mm. And I went, like, and we're off. <laughs> Instantly, yeah. in my brain, I'm like, "We're a band. Yeah. We're not a side project. Just like that, it happened. We're yeah. a fucking band. Yeah. It's so different, dude. And and just to like, like the way, and then you start talking to us, and it's, dude, that that shit, like." I'm gonna mesh this together right there with like that audio, like how that's a good it idea, comes yeah. together because so people can see like what we're talking about because of what we described earlier with how we think about jamming and we had no idea what was gonna. I I was scared and then instantly I was like, oh no. Yeah, that's the beauty of improv. Like though. yeah, it's like oh I'm like I'm not. This is exactly where we're supposed to be and even those spots in that jam where you can tell we were searching for the next place mm-hmm. to explore. Bro, once we, once those doors opened and we yeah. let the blinds, uh, like, open the blinds, it was like, dude, dude, just beautiful shit. Just yeah, beautiful, for just beautiful, beautiful shit. The yeah. last one we did was pretty interesting. Yeah. It was very, shows where we are, we were in life. Mm-hmm. We were just, <laughs> Carney didn't play bass, Carney played guitar. Cal played the synth bass. Mm-hmm. You played guitar, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just solo the whole time, mm. which is like a whole different, you know, Bob, yeah. fucking raging that Ripping, time. Yeah. It was it was hype. It was hype. Yeah, hours worth too. Yeah, but but the dude, um, we do have from the first jam a really 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 good one. We just don't have the video for it oh, okay. because I was stoned and. Pressed unrecord. <laughs> unrecord. <laughs> I'd like you to unrecord, please. I unrecorded <laughs> it, and then the uh, I'm waiting for the footage from the other one. But uh, homie's just got life, you know. He's yeah. got life situations. Life be life. I don't know, if press homie, but we have the audio, so I think that me and Cal are talking about just dropping the audio because it is so. It's the Monster Mash one. Remember? I'd have to hear. When it. you were like the Monster Mash, <laughs> like dude, it was like, as a. Oh, I fuck with that song oh, heavy. Dude, it was... They did the mash. 
if you really don't remember it, like before you leave, I have to play it because, like, at least the first yeah, three yeah. minutes because it is so fucking good. It's so good. So, um, all right. So that's interesting, man. Because, like, um, obviously, I'm aware of like your inclinations. It's why we're so intuitive with each other musically. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm aware of these things, but I like hearing you describe your perspective. Obviously, because like. The way that you think about it, it's, I mean, I'm not saying I'm right, but, like, dude, when people mesh, you mesh, and, like, everything you're saying is, like, everything I'm thinking about you, mm. and, like, and it makes sense, because you're very intentional, obviously, but some people don't pick up on that, obviously, but, yeah. but you, um, artistically, to be that precise and deliberate, and it shows in your character as the person that you are, it's, like, honestly, like... It's so admirable, and and the way that I am as a musician, and I let my emotions get the best of me, like sometimes, mm. like not with people, but yeah. to myself. Gotcha. And it plays a role when I write by myself, when mm-hmm. I'm by myself and I'm creating something, and and I'm a rapper too. Mm. So it's like I have some sort of like unwritten rule that I'm allowed to be an asshole sometimes. Yeah. I'm allowed to talk some shit, but I don't like that. I don't like. I never liked that. That's why, like we were talking about, that's why I did ciphers, not mm-hmm. rap battles. I never liked the spot of hip hop being very aggressive. I like the freedom to express your anger, but not to be at somebody. Mm-hmm. Can you do a guitar solo at somebody? Sure. <laughs> you, know? you could, but yeah, it's not could, like, but... fuck you, bitch, you did this. It's like, yeah. It's like, where? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's a good question. So, can you so do different. guitar solo at somebody? You can. I mean, you definitely can. You could definitely, like, freak but someone gonna, out. they're going to like you more. Yeah. <laughs> they're not, like, it's, I mean, well, maybe they'll were, like you yeah. more. Maybe they like that. That's a that's a whole other yeah. conversation right there. But, but yeah, like, emotionally as a rapper, it's very, like, so to hear from someone who, I know you're a poet. I know you have songs where you're oh, you have yeah, vocals yeah, yeah. on it. Like I want to hear it. It's like, it's funny you... as shit though, because it's like uh, the time that I met you is like after my first run of that. Like, what I'm, just just jamming on guitar and singer stuff? songwriter. Mm-hmm. I'm playing. I'm singing. I'm writing songs. I'm mm-hmm. I'm doing that thing. You know, I did that for however many years i guess i met you probably like what 2019 2020 around then because i met yeah, right around before, then right before to john yeah so like for the four years prior to that all i did was i'm singing i'm playing acoustic guitar i'm writing songs no production no recording yeah exclusively that mm-hmm. which is what led me to like learn how to record and produce all that stuff so kind of like now full circle podcast i'm mm-hmm. um, about to do that thing again if that makes sense no, another go around of yeah. here's my songs here's me singing here's me doing this thing da, 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 you know that's what I'm saying it's our turn it's our turn <laughs> yeah now. you know so it's our turn yeah but as far as like writing and all that stuff yeah I, I adore the written word and I value it to the highest degree you know as, as, as you do which is why we connect you know yep. you're crazy with the pen you know thank you brother of course same and that's like a I feel that I feel I do feel. Oh my god, dude, got knocked the fuck out. I knew it. Just like that. I knew it. Just like that. My On that parlay. Like my no my uh. All right, you you want to know what happened here? Guys, it might le- it might seem like I suck at betting because I'm because <laughs> I'm not rich yet. <laughs> but I promise you, I'm very good. And um, if I if I'm getting thirteen right and twelve wrong, I mean oh shit. 13 right and one, like wrong. one wrong, you just saw the one that got wrong. Ah, oh, that blows. But the plus side is it was the first one. So if you want to, you can dive back in. No, I'm going to. Gotcha. I'm going to dive in. But this is, this is what happens, man. Like when, when, you, um, when you feed into the hype of certain fighters for over like what you actually know, like sometimes you just know that this guy doesn't have it mm-hmm. or – like, and it's weird because people, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, why do you even look at their stare? Like, what's the point of a stare down? Like, why are they, like, even looking at each other? Like, mm-hmm. they're sizing each other up. Okay, cool. These things matter because if they're, if the, if the media is asking them questions and they, like, they can't handle the, like, the lights, like how we're talking right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I've done podcasts and, like, you guys can go look at them. <laughs> There's certain ones where people are just, 
not talking to me. (laughs) (laughs) The the lights turn on, and then they're just... They just sit there, and then, okay, I can talk, man. We know that. Mm -hmm. We don't need to know that, though. That's not the point of this podcast. It's like, I want to know what you're thinking. Yeah. So when you see a fighter, and they're like, they have like six knockouts, but when they finally get to this situation, and they're in the lights, and they're like, I came here to do this, and they're like, it's very like, Mm. you can see it, just like you're jamming. Yeah. It's kind of like an energy thing. But it's just like seeing a motherfucker shred and like go off on guitar. Mm-hmm. And then it just happens to be the night that you saw him. Like he was dosed. Like he took a little too much to gotcha. drink. And now he's off by a half step. Mm-hmm. And he's not tempo wise. Like it's it's very rare. Yeah. But um, that's what just happened right there. <laughs> gotcha. This fighter probably... Yeah, I probably shouldn't have touched that to be honest with you. Mm. That was the that was the fight there earlier that my other shit didn't work, so I just put him in this one mm. and then yeah, but like when you're betting a dollar, guys, to win fucking a hundred and fifty, yeah. like I'm not mad. I'll place another dollar right now to win hundred fifty. He's probably talking about shit. He's a shit. But yeah. that's besides the point. That's a, a all the all of what I just said is a metaphor, yeah. actually, to like everything that and how I view everything. Mm. it's more about that the consistency of like understanding that um but so tied into the music with uh what you have dropping and on the way do you um do you have a single or a specific project or an idea of what you're gonna come with yeah, I have a variety of ideas. So, I mean, actively, I'm dropping with my brother. Uh, mm-hmm. We just dropped his most recent single. Oh, he's awesome, dude. Like, two or three weeks ago. He's um, awesome. Which I produced and played all the instruments on, recorded it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's his fourth single that we've dropped in the past few years. So, I've been dropping through him, you know, like, my productions. And, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You like, know? the only ones that I've heard recently were from that. Yeah, yeah. so that's been my main focus the past, uh, you know, few years is mm-hmm. building my brother's uh, music up and... Um, yeah, just sharpening my sword through through that. Um, but yeah, so I have a project of dance music, like house music that I'm going to drop. Oh, I have a yeah. project of like beats that I intend on dropping, you know, like lo-fi or whatever, mm-hmm. singer, songwriter stuff. <laughs> Every single one. Make, <laughs> Every making one. remixes. Just email. <laughs> yeah. I'm going uh, so to rip them if you don't email. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. email it to Fuck me. it, bro. So keep the quality up. <laughs> <laughs> high, high quality waves Might only. as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Plenty to be dropped. I'm going to rip them. Like, yeah. I'm going to sample them yeah. other, either way. Yeah. Um, I love rap. That's why I love rap. Just rip it. Rip Look, it and rap. I'm rapping on this shit no matter what you think. Bro. I don't care, bro. I'm rapping on that shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's getting rapped on. The most polite way possible. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so many productions and uh, just so much music that we talked about a little off camera of just the idea of like sitting on music or just the vault and um, spent the past five years really sharpening my, my craft of mm. production, engineering, musicianship, all of, yeah, you know, the across the board. The equipment you have is true. Yeah, I have a nice amount of equipment. I've been working at the studio for four years we now. We all you do. Know, so, so us combined is like, t- yeah. come on, dude. I, I have big trust in divine timing. Like I feel like my mm. skills, the opportunities – um, my health, my knowledge, everything is like mm-hmm. exactly where it needs to be at the right moment. I where agree. things are starting to really uh, churn from an internal perspective. Mm-hmm. Talking about confidence and yep. belief yep. in self. Yep. Um, I feel like that is just hitting at the, the ultimate stride right now. Yes. You know? It's beautiful. Yeah. So a lot of sh- fucking music coming out. That's fucking Make sure you awesome. keep your ears open. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> They don't have a choice, bro. They're going to hear it. <laughs> yeah, they're going to hear gonna it. They're going to be in the grocery store here. Yeah, they're going to hear that shit. <laughs> If they don't choose to click on our shit, it's gonna just be there. I yeah. swear to God. <laughs> and it's like, and, and that's what I mean about timeless music, bro. It really doesn't matter. We always hear stories when we were coming up about like this artist pushed this song for three years before it got big, yep. two years with the label. Mm-hmm. So like, I just know that like, dude, when you have a song that is that good, it's yeah. gonna be that good. The whole time, man. Exactly. And and, and and I don't mean 
a song that's what was good in the eighties that's good now, and I don't mean radio stations that are playing the same thirty songs from the seventies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Those. I don't mean that. I don't mean the reiterated entertainment hits. No. I mean there are timeless songs that every time you hear it, and it doesn't matter how much you do, it is. That's it. Yep. You needed to hear it. Exactly. And it's very rare that those songs come along. Mm-hmm. So our generation tends to make a lot of music only because we can actually record it all, dude. So yeah, that's why that's when true. you have a, a mogul, 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 however you say the word, I will use that to describe me, you, Carney, and Cal, straight mm-hmm. up. Yeah. When you have people like us who understand the meaning of what these songs are and the fact that we're documenting it, just to have the song to then make the skeleton into the body that it is, this is these are different levels of songwriting yeah. than writing it on a piece of paper and having the la la la, which there's beauty in that. Yeah. There for sure is, but like this is way more pure, like to another degree. And that can lead into another another conversation. Like I'll just give a an, a branch right here of that, whereas I stopped listening to music mm. when I started making it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's fair. 12 years ago, stopped listening to any new rap, mm-hmm. any any rock, anything, because I didn't want any influence poetically, sonically, to somewhat get stuck in my head that yeah. I didn't know about, and then I wrote something, and then I didn't realize it was a song already. Mm. I felt that way. So I, I took... I took what I loved, what I do, the most away from myself. Mm. It's like so theatrical and poetic when you really think about what I did to do what I want. Like I took away everything I love to do what I love. It's it's so retarded, honestly. Like It'd you can't not, go full mm. retard. Like that's the rule. <laughs> Never go full retard. I kind of did. <laughs> I kind yeah. I kind of dove into that music. Shit, like, and I, and I like, I, I took away that chance to enjoy a friend mm. making something because I didn't want to, you know. And then um, the second that I did start enjoying my friends and stuff, like, it was, it's very eerie. I don't want to go here, but like, the, the, like the friends that I fucked with, they died, mm. and they were musicians. Gotcha. So the second I try started listening to, to my friends' musics. Musics, <laughs> they passed, and then I couldn't listen to the music because it was pain point. So now it's like I can't even listen to it, yeah. and it's like, dude, it was a very, it's, dude. The story is very weird with that, but it's all the same lesson as far as what I'm talking about. What you just said stems off of the originality hmm. of like wanting to be pure and yeah. like you, authentic, and not. Obviously, we have our influences. Like yeah. what we like and the sound we want to achieve, mm-hmm. but we have to find our own way to do it, exactly. which is part of mixing. Mixing your own shit, yeah. finding what your voice sounds like. Which yeah. I definitely identify with because I feel like when I first started playing guitar, yeah, it was all learning how to play covers. Yeah, like, you had to, yeah, just to know the know, chords and stuff. Learning how to play other people's That's songs. That's where I'm at right now on the guitar. Yeah, which is like natural. That's why then, I'm doing mashups. Yeah. And then you do that for a while, and then you learn how to write your own songs, and then it goes full circle again. When I did the production stuff, you start to remake other people's beats, or you start mm-hmm. to use them as reference tracks for mixes to figure mm-hmm. out like what is a trap beat, you know? What does a trap yeah. beat sound like? What does a reggae song sound like? What does hip hop sound like? R and B, house music, all of these different genres have their own, yeah, um, you know, ingredients, if you will. So, learning those things, studying other people's music, and then you take that, internalize it, and then. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, shut everything off. Yeah. Now I'm gonna um, put my own mm. my own lens down. You know. Yeah, it's interesting. That's how. Yeah, I guess that is what I was saying. I shut all that off like before I knew that I was supposed to do that, and I guess that I was more of a nerd with music than I thought I was because I was very aware of specific uh, genres. I grew up more like the Luther Vandross or in like really rhythm and blues kind of thing modernized not not like a blues music mm-hmm. but r&b but um but like by i i feel like by having a a deep tap in with a like music that's like soulful like that mm-hmm. just naturally connects you to 
it's like church musicians. Yeah, definitely. Like musicians that pl- learned from church are the I can't pl- like, dude. I can't play drums like those motherfuckers. Yeah, no, they're the best. Like, I cannot yeah. do that shit. Yeah. And there's something about like those songs that they're playing. Not mm-hmm. even that it's a one, two, three, four kind of thing. Yeah. Not even like a like yeah like learning it. It's just like there's something there with that music that they're listening to. Mm-hmm. I think that plays a big role in growing up that you don't understand that I wasn't aware of. So like. As a rapper, when people ask me what my influence is, I'll tell them it's Missy Elliott and Ludacris. Like, gotcha. Missy Elliott and Ludacris, like, Ludacris's flows. Hmm. Missy Elliott's production with being open to do anything. Yeah, experimentation. Which obviously ties into Tim and everything, but... Yeah. But, um... As an artist, like, yeah. experimentation aesthetically. But like, and, yeah. what I could say, all I can say is, like, Ludacris and Missy Elliott. That's who I think of when I think of my core. Gotcha. As far as, uh, yeah influence or something to Mm. be like open to different kinds of beats or flows gotcha like and then when now when you think about bugs and you you hear that now and if you're aware of that then you're like oh it all makes sense now yeah you know whereas it gives me the freedom to do that whereas if i was like this style it kind of pigeonholes you i want to be able to play anything and do everything so that was always my thing and that actually stems from like a weird side of like Wanting to be liked by everybody. Mm. That's a human thing. Yeah. I want everyone to like me. So, like, if you don't like me because of how I dress or because I make rap, then what do you like? Rock? I got rock. Yeah. Oh, you want to jam? Like, <laughs> dude. I got you, yeah. Oh, you want Deep House? Mm-hmm. Give me one second. Say a word. Let me let me sample it for a yeah. second. And let me... Give me 10 minutes, yeah. Say, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Like, and then, yeah, like, like yeah, like, <laughs> fuck, fuck you. And then fuck now you. you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah. See, that's how I view music, and that's literally mm-hmm. the underlying reason why I make every genre. I want to. I want to be friends with everybody. Okay. So I make every genre because I know that people are judging me. And if I have something that I know that they won't judge me about and they can agree with, then we can talk. We can fucks with each other. True, yeah. There's a baseline of yeah. understanding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you connect musically. Yeah. yeah. It can be a political idea. It's just like just like a liberal being a liberal and a conservative mm-hmm. being a conservative, a rapper mm-hmm. being a rapper, a drummer being a drummer. Yeah. Like, but you see how certain things are competition, like I was saying, rappers are competition with rappers. Yeah, I mean... So, so with a rapper, you can't be a rapper. Yeah. With a rapper, you gotta be like a producer like it's very weird Mm -hmm. but to understand those malleable spongy notions is like kind of why i make everything Mm -hmm. i want to be friends with everybody bro that's what it is for real so and because at the end of the day dude we just want to dance even if it's headbanging moshing is dancing connect yeah you know connect with people on a greater scale and that's what it is when you're a center of attention musically you are not the center of attention because you hit the game winning shot. Yeah. You're the center of attention because everybody understands in their own way. There's a thousand different people singing your lyrics for a thousand different reasons. 100%. Yeah. Their reason. And yeah. they won the game with you. Yeah. We're all winning at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, when I hit the half court shot to win $30,000 at halftime, mm-hmm. I won. Yeah. You guys witnessed it and felt that you've, like, that feeling. Yeah, but you didn't win. You didn't win. Yeah, I yeah. won. Mm-hmm. That's not what music Music's is. Music's different. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm so happy I was able to describe that with it. That's because of you. Thank you. Thank you. No doubt, bro. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to explain this shit, yeah, dude. We're trying to figure it out. Put this beautiful life into words, man. Dude, that's, yeah, that is. That's that's an amazing aspect. That's That's what it is. You know? I think a lot of people miss that yeah. as far as why they do the things that they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe that 100%, man. You got to mm-hmm. understand yourself and understand what makes you tick, Yeah, how you move, understand where you come from. You know, I'm very mm-hmm. thankful to know where I come from and yep. my family and my grandparents and everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's, and that's like dies into everything that you were saying, which is tied into this different story, like how you were saying you took the space you did the you did that spot you did this spot creatively musically with the sections of when you learned what you learned yep. and and how to cultivate it and you had a, a releasing section and then a section where you pulled back to create and mm-hmm. now you're back in a spot where you're ready to 
release. Exactly, yeah. And that's where I'm at. I'm in the same exact spot. Yeah. Like, I've been venting, but not releasing. Mm. Like, it's, it's just the same thing as living versus thriving. Gotcha. We deserve to thrive. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We deserve it, bro. Yeah, We're that release. People. The yeah. creation, the release. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to release on people, bro. Like, <laughs> they deserve to be a part of what we're saying and yeah, hug us and hold hands with us and thrive in the knowledge that we learned yeah. and are sharing. To win with us. Yes. To, to reflect on your metaphor. Yes. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. That's what it's about. Dude. Abundance. We can all win. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. And when I win, you win. And when you win... Dude, I'm so much more happy. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, and that's the thing about being an empath. And what the other thing that we were talking about earlier is like, I'm only happy when other people are, mm. and that's something I really had to realize. Like that, if I'm making everyone else around me happy, then I'm happy. And then the second I'm alone, I'm not happy, which is weird. So like, okay, I'm helping everyone else, but I'm not helping myself. Yeah. It's a very weird dynamic to understand that. To help yourself, sometimes you have to stop helping other people. And that's hard for somebody who just wants everyone to be there. Yeah, you know? it's definitely tough. That was a weird, weird spot I was in for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And now that I realize like what I deserve, what you deserve, what yeah. the other people around me deserve, and the energy I was giving certain scenarios or ideas... Or thoughts, it completely flips into like, oh, damn, like that work ethic that I was speaking of, that work ethic that I feel like I don't have, Mm -hmm. I do. I'm just using all that energy on things that I wish didn't happen but did, and I ruminate on it. And now it turns into, damn, manifestation has to be real. Yeah. Because you're just stuck on this thought. And... And then it's so weird when you th- you have one positive thought and you make a move on it and you're there. Exactly, yeah. You're right out of the rut. Mm. You're not where you were <laughs> two fucking days ago because you decided to, fuck this, I can't do this. I'm not going to roll yeah. over and die. You make that decision. You, you make that, and then, and then you realize, holy shit, everything that I've been doing to myself. Even if someone else did it, you knew you yeah. know, you kind of know. 100%. Yeah, Deep no. down, intuition is there. No doubt. You know, you got to be aware when somebody's a little weird or like, so when someone does something weird to you, you got to really think like, did I know that this was going to happen or did I, you know, was I polite or naive or optimistic or whatever these words are? It's very interesting, introspective things. And you only really learn it when you do art, man. Even if you're just painting. Yeah. Like when you're not, it has nothing to do with words, has nothing like just music and sounds or. Yeah, just transmutation. And you know, taking the emotions or feelings that you have and mm-hmm. putting it. Working out. And anything. yeah, exercise, putting it into something, through something, you know, mm-hmm. to get it out of you and to not fester on mm-hmm. it indefinitely, you know. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Yeah. Life is interesting, dude. Life so, is, um, man, life is beautiful, man. I love you so much, dude. You're beautiful, man. Appreciate you, I love dog. you so much. Thank you, you so too. much for coming. Of course, man. You got I'll anything else you want to know? Um, Any yes, last questions? Know. Anything yes, you got dude, on your what's mind? What's your favorite color? <laughs> my favorite color is turquoise. Turquoise? Gnarly. Yeah, turquoise Why? is my shit. Um, I just think it's the perfect... Oh, dude. What? I just I think it's the perfect shade, bro. It's r- right between blue and green. It's just the beautiful, relax- relaxing color. That is a good color. Tranquil. Um, And I like to believe that that's aligned with who i am as a person the music that i make um that's a great color dude yeah i just feel as though that it it's just a reflection of who i am you know mm-hmm. the color turquoise um i do agree that vibe you know very, very welcoming vibe did you know that um like blue wasn't even a color back in the day it was just all shades of green Interesting. I didn't know that. Either way, either one. It was either green or blue, but there were no, like, there was no lights and no purple. There was no red. Wow. It was just all blue. And either one. I'm wrong. Either way. Yeah. Green or blue. Yeah, somewhere in between green and blue. Right in the middle, like, baby blue is my favorite color. Yeah. So that's kind of. Yeah, that world. That yeah. that seafoam green, turquoise, uh-huh. that world right there. Mm. That's uh that's my shit. Good call. I fuck with that. I yeah. fuck that. All right, uh one more question. Um if you could be not be, but which Disney character, cartoon character represents you most? That's a great question. Or who is your favorite? It's kind of the same thing, I guess. Uh, but, let me um, see. Which cartoon character would you say is like, yo? 
like I fuck with them or like that's my shit. Or like, I fucks with them or, or that I reminds me of me. Like that reminds me of me. So, yeah, either one. Uh, it's kind of the same thing in my head. Let me think. I'm trying to reflect on all of the wonderful cartoons I used to watch as a child, and I think I love this question because everyone's so different. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Timmy Turner. And the reason I go with Timmy Turner is because I truly believe that whatever I want, I can have. I'm a supercharged magnet. You know? Mm. Mm. I like that answer. Yeah. I'm blessed Turner. and I'm guided. I'm Facts. covered. Mm-hmm. You know? Facts. That's awesome. What a great one. But life's a little odd too, you know. <laughs> Fairly, <laughs> you know. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a that's a good one, dude. For the reason though, not because of what it is. For the reason yeah. that you said, that's a great one. All I have to do is just wish it, and it's mine, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was re- referencing with like manifestation. And exactly. That's why I got this tattoo. I'm mm-hmm. a supercharged magnet. Oh, the Pokemon. Is yeah, magnet on. I just got it like a couple oh, months ago. That's awesome. Thank you, bro. I tell myself every day I'm a supercharged magnet, man. Every mm-hmm. single day, whatever I want, you know, just being true to actually what I want. Then it mm-hmm. comes to you, you know. You know, it's crazy. Is I did that two weeks ago, and yeah. Exactly. Look, hundred percent. It's real. It's real. Yeah. No, it's real. It's real. Alignment. What's for you is for you. Yep. If you know what is for you. And usually you know? it's right there, which is so weird. Exactly. It's always right there. And when they say like, <laughs> you, whenever you're not looking for it, it'll find you. No. What that means is it's right there, guys. Yeah. That's actually, <laughs> whoa, that's what I learned. It's no. It's right what there, that yeah. means is it's there. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you have to search for. Or like, yo, I'm waiting for this to happen in my life. No, the answer you're looking for is literally it. That's right there. Like it's that's yeah, that's trippy. Hundred percent. I got a song called Ancestors, and one of the lines is trust in something stronger than us. I keep a stack of magnets in my pocket to remind me of forces unseen. Mm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Forces unseen. You know what I'm saying? Like big God, trust. I wish we weren't using gas and that like we had magnets in the ground and we could like turn the car on and we would like just drive <gasps> with magnets. Yeah, yeah, that that's, yeah. That then we have levitation like sidewalks and like skateboards with magnets and like Damn. that's where my brain goes. <laughs> that's yeah. where dude, that's we should be doing that. What oh my god, we should have trains everywhere. With just, magnets. Like, yeah. Magnetizing yeah, bro. everything, bro. That shit is so fascinating to me though, bro. Like you ever try to push together two ends of a polar end of a magnet the invisible force that propels them or repels them from one another Mm -hmm. is incredibly fascinating to me because i can't see it but i know it's there and that and that thing definitely carries into here that we don't even pick up on most don't you know that repelling is you can feel it but it's not you can't see it yep which means that how many person other doesn't even have to do anything to yes. you. It's just there. It's there. It's something there. It's so like re- remaining aware eating of eating too much Taco Bell or something. I'm like, there's a lot of magnesium. <laughs> <that. laughs> magnesium. There's something in that brain that's making me like. <laughs> I just want to hit your head with mine. <laughs> Got that magnesium. <laughs> no, but dude, that's like that's what I literally think about that kind of shit. Like, damn, like we are aware of like forces like that Mm -hmm. that we don't use to our advantage as far as power yeah if we set up a constant situation where a magnet is just repelling and spinning that's forever power don't need solar you don't need the the currents with the fucking panel you don't need the wind we have magnets that we just fucking crack science did we just become scientists? <laughs> we are. And we're going to get demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to take the $13 I would have made. <laughs> it turned- the 13 fucking... And they're going to keep an ad on it. Watch. Yeah. There's going to be ads on this, and I'm not going to make a dollar from it. Because <laughs> they it. said, yo, you guys just took all our money away, which is gas. <laughs> like, yeah. Stop gassing me, you motherfuckers. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, magnets are the answer, actually. Yeah, no. But, um, but that's literally to the metaphor of you have the answer that I've, that is the answer mm-hmm. metaphorically 
physically. Yeah, physically. Like, actually. Spiritually, all of the above. You actually. Know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's truly what that's I believe. It. And it does know? kind of represent, like, your logo, actually. Now that I look at your logo and I look at the eyeball on the jaw. And... Yeah, it's all connected, you know, mm-hmm. again, to intentionality. But, yeah, the logo, if we each want to briefly talk about it's a compass to the inner self have mm. you ever seen uh there's a really yeah what is it so it's, um, uh my friend andrew arcangeli shout out to him he just um so i designed it and then he did the drawing mm-hmm. so it's a compass and it has three levels of, of hearts the inner heart is love of oh self, i do see the heart now love of self love of uh community and love of earth right there's three hearts oh. and this is the compass to the inner self so all of these outskirts are the decisions that we make that take us away the from plants, the inner self like the plants growing. you know you're getting out in the weeds you're not you're not in. So there's a really good um lecture on YouTube by uh, KRS One, the rapper. I'm sure it depends on not to cut you off. I'm sure like what people focus on on that depends on where they're at too. There you go. Now you're talking That's my language. Matter. Yeah. You know, but KRS One has an incredible lecture on YouTube. You should watch it. Everything that KRS One does is a lecture, and you should watch everything. That yeah. He does. Have you ever seen it though? It's about uh, I think the fifth dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about going in and out. Yep, yep, yep. I watched Not that shit. Not recently, but is there a new one? No, nah, it's from okay, yeah, from I years know ago. What, I know yeah, what you're talking about yeah, and um, yeah, that just really struck a chord with me. Of just we've lost our ability to go in and out to tap in, mm-hmm. you know, and that's um, what my artistry is. Back to the discover, explore, actualize, like discovery of self. Mm-hmm. You know, because I feel like if I know myself on a deep level, then I can care for you on a deep level. Yep. Which means I can care for the earth on a deep level. You mm-hmm. know, so it's like that's my pillar. That's my. And if you don't care for yourself, how the fuck could you? You're pouring from an empty cup. Yeah. You ain't shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yeah, that's my credo. That's why I care so deeply about this art shit because it's the only way that I can be available to myself and others, you know? Same. I agree. God, it's so beautiful. You're such a beautiful person, dude. Appreciate you, man. Thank you again for having me awesome, out here, bro. Man. Thank you, man. I know you've been trying to do this shit for a minute. I'm glad we finally nah, we're did, gonna bro. Do, we're going to do another one. I don't. I yeah, don't, we're I up, like, bro. I feel like we didn't even touch the basis of yeah. shit, but. Um, but yeah, like I, uh, I usually like I don't have people on unless I have like ten episodes in between. But I already have them booked, so I can have you on literally again in a month type thing. Oh so yeah, whenever you need me. Back. I have a, I definitely want to. Um, yeah, let's tap back in when um, after me and you drop some. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll see what we did. Um, with the previews and the, I'm sure that it'll probably have been like the. the Peaks and valleys, or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, um, but when we come back again, I'll yeah. have something for you to yeah. drop. Yeah. And we're doing shit. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll be collabing. But um, our money league. Thank you so much. Buggy. Appreciate we're it. We're out here, my guy. Full circle podcast. Make sure you subscribe to that shit. <laughs>